Joining us now from here, South Dakota, is Republican Senator uh, Mike Rounds. Uh, Senator Rounds, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Let me start with uh, immigration. Uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis flew planes of migrants from Texas to Martha's Vineyard this week without any warning to local officials. I, I get that the immigration system is a mess and has needed reform for decades, but these are people fleeing Marxism in Venezuela. Many were, uh, they say, falsely told there would be jobs and housing waiting for them when they arrived in Massachusetts. Do you support uh, what Abbott and, Santa and DeSantis are doing? They're doing their best to try to send a message to the rest of the nation about the plight of those individuals that are coming from south of the border. You're talking about 3.4 million people just since the start of this Biden administration that have crossed the border. And they're coming into southern states. What is a governor supposed to do? They're trying to send a message to the rest of the country that this is not acceptable and that their states can't handle that type of an inflow. Now, that's the equivalent of four times the population of my state of South Dakota. But Jake, it's more than that. It's also everything else that's coming across the border at the same time. We're 1,200 miles away from the border here in South Dakota, and yet the drug trafficking still affects our state as well. Our Native American population reservations have got huge inflows of drug trafficking coming into yeah. our state into some of the heaviest poverty areas of the entire country. So but, it's affecting all of our states, but the administration is not doing anything about it. So the, as I said, this immigration crisis has been going on f literally for decades. There hasn't been a major immigration bill uh, since Ronald Reagan was president. Um, but but as as uh, you, you did not note, uh, and I did, uh, earlier in the show, uh, one of the buses um, sent by Texas Governor Greg Abbott dropped off about 50 migrants in front of the vice president's residence, including a, a one-month-old baby. Um, there isn't any heads up being given to Mayor Adams, you just heard from him, uh, or the individuals on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, I, I get they're trying to send a message, they're trying to get the attention, but they're also, isn't there a degree of, of trolling going on here? Uh, and, and, and do you really have no issue with using human beings, a one-month-old baby, little kids, to, to make a political point like this? You have to put it in perspective of what's happening at the southern border right now. This is every single day, thousands of individuals coming across with babies, and they're coming into those states. Those governors are facing that, not just at the terms of 50 of them, they're talking about hundreds of them, if not thousands per day. And so, yeah, I mean, do any of us like the situation that we're in? And absolutely not. As a matter of fact, I would suspect that the individuals in the southern states that are trying to find a way to get the attention of the administration would love to have other alternatives to them. It's been 606 days since Joe Biden took office, and this problem has done nothing except continue to develop. This is a national problem, and yet these governors on, along the southern borders are the ones that are faced with trying to to address it. Right. And it's not just 50 of these individuals coming across, it's thousands and it's on a daily basis. Right, and of course, uh, the immigration laws in this country do allow people to come to this country to seek asylum. Uh, it seems to me that, that the larger solution that needs to happen here, and I don't know that you would disagree, is a comprehensive immigration bill that would include border security, uh, and then, you know, perhaps in order for there to be a compromise, a pathway to citizenship for people who have been here for decades. In, in the more than 20 years I've been in this town, I've seen people like President George W. Bush and Senator Lindsey Graham and Senator Marco Rubio trying to get immigration reform done, working with Democrats. Every time they were defeated by House Republicans who wouldn't go along with any sort of compromise. Would you support restarting bipartisan negotiations to try and to try to finally fix this broken immigration system. Those discussions are ongoing in the United States Senate. In fact, the last time that there was a hard push was in 2017. Myself and Senator Angus King uh, co-sponsored the measure together on behalf of a bipartisan group. We got 54 votes in the Senate at that time, and that included addressing the folks that have been brought here through no fault of their own, the Dreamers. We addressed chain migration. Uh, we addressed a pathway to citizenship over an extended period of years. We thought we had a pretty good approach. Nothing has happened during this administration. Yes, would we like to step forward again and, and try appro an approach again? Absolutely. Do we have to address it? Yes. Do we have to have uh, a border security? 
before anything else can happen, we've got to be able to defend that border. We've got to be able to make a border that actually works. Otherwise, why should people pay any attention to the laws that we've got? And what good would it do to reform them if we're not going to enforce them? Let's turn to abortion, because this week your Republican colleague, Senator Lindsey Graham, introduced uh, a bill that would ban abortion nationwide after 15 weeks. Do you support the bill? No, I think right now we should allow the states to explore the different possibilities about the appropriate way. Uh, here in South Dakota, we, we have one which is what I actually signed into law when, when I was governor uh, back in 2005, 2006. But I think the individual states will come up with a multiple uh, or a, a whole lot of different ideas about how to appropriately discuss uh, uh, abortion in general. And then I think there will be a consensus over a period of years. But at this point, to have Congress step back in and to tell all of the states that we know better than them how to handle this is probably not the right direction to go. We actually looked, uh, when before the last decision, we actually looked as a group of us at uh, trying to ban any abortion past 20 weeks. We weren't successful at that time. I, I don't think any proposal today would be successful in the House and the Senate. I think a better approach probably will be to allow the states to work through this and to find the appropriate language on a state-by-state -state basis and to find that common ground. Uh, after that, maybe Congress steps in again. But at this point, I think the states are in a better shape to explore and to find the right direction on a state-by-state -state basis. You're on the uh, Senate Foreign Relations Committee. The top Republican on the House Intelligence Committee, uh, Congressman Mike Turner of Ohio, told me that he does not think that the U.S. Uh, should swap a convicted Russian arms dealer in exchange for jailed Americans in Russia, Paul Whelan and Brittany Griner. He, he thinks that uh, Victor Boot is just too dangerous. Um, do you agree or do you think the U.S. should be willing to make the swap? I'm on the Armed Services Committee, and I'm also on the Foreign Relations Committee. We have not had a classified discussion about what the impact would be. I know that this is up to the president to make up his mind and that we probably won't have a say in it. So I'm going to withhold judgment uh, at this point. Um, I don't mind being critical of the administration, but I don't want to be critical of the administration on their decision-making process without having all the facts in front of me. All right. Senator Mike Rounds of South Dakota, good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, sir. President Biden